I've been thinking about making this video for a long time. A few people have commented on my reviews on the Dremel and some of the attachments with it, especially the router base attachment. And I thought it would be nice to have a router table. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to make a picture frame using a very simple router table that I've made that just clamps onto your workbench. It's made from scrap wood. Very easy to put together, it's all just screws. There's no gluing or joints or anything like that. It turns the router base into a router table. So I hope you found it useful. And if you can bear with it to the end, which most of you won't be able to, I don't think, and look at this picture frame, hopefully it will inspire you guys to have a go and do something like this yourselves. First step is to disassemble the router base insofar as take the rods out of the parallel edge guide there and then take these screws and nuts out of the base. So I'm left with the base, the two rods and the clamping screws. So I've been rooting around and found some scrap and this is quarter inch plywood. It's 16 and a half inches long. Now these measurements are not important and it's eight inches wide. Quarter inch ply, three eighths would be okay, MDF, anything like that. It's just got to be big enough so that you can make the table out of it. So these two pieces would have just been reclaimed from an old drawer. Five and a half inches long and I cut them down into two inch widths. So it's five and a half by two inches and seven eighths of an inch. So the next thing I've got to do is find a drill bit that is the same size as these rods. As you see, if I put the drill bit in there, there is very little play when I move it around. And this drill bit is 6.5 millimeters. I'm just going to roughly place it in the center and roughly is good enough. Then I'm going to take one of the pieces of wood, push it up against the flat edge there. Keeping everything in place, I'm going to push the drill bit through the base in the holes where the rod goes until it's touching the wood at that end. And I'm going to press down on this push the drill bit and spin it at the same time so that it marks the wood. Now I've got to try and do this without moving anything. That is the mark there, just where my thumbnail is, look. So I'm going to drill that hole out now using the 6.5mm drill bit. So that's my 6.5mm hole drilled. I'm going to slide this bar in, now that is a tight fit. Then I'm going to slide in the router base, push it up against the wood again. And then I'm going to mark the other hole. So I'm pressing down on the wood so it's flat against the plywood base and spinning this drill bit round. Bring this up to the camera, you can see the mark there. So I know where to drill my second hole now. So that's my two holes drilled. So I'm gonna try them to make sure that they work. So I've pushed the two bars in my first piece of wood and as you can see, they've come through to the other side. And I'm going to make sure that the router base fits nicely onto those pins. So all I've got to do now is make another one of these with this piece of wood. All I'm going to do to drill the first hole in the second piece of wood is hold one on top of the other and make sure that these edges are actually in line because they're going to actually screw into the base at the bottom there. So I'll drill the first hole now. That's the first hole drilled. Put a pin through both pieces of wood, like so. You can see they're lined up along that edge, which is what I want. So putting that pin in will just keep everything in place for me drilling the second hole. And again, I need to make sure that the edge is lined up. Well, I can do that a lot easier now, because that pin's in. Right, so we'll see what it's like when we assemble it. And they actually line up very well. It is rock steady, so that is definitely going to work. I'll zoom up close, you can see that this flat edge is hard against this piece of wood and the round edge is hard against this piece of wood. So it's kind of clamped. So if you've got some wax, furniture wax or candle wax, if you put that inside the hole, it actually loosens everything up and makes things a lot easier to move backwards and forwards. So put the retaining nuts inside the router base where they belong and the screws make sure you don't put them in too far push the rods into the base 
through the other side the second piece of wood and there we go so that's basically the base component parts and if you see now I can clamp these two rods and that just gives it a little bit of extra security now it doesn't need that because this thing can't move anywhere because it's trapped with this flat edge there and the round edge there it can't go anywhere find the center of the plywood and then I'm gonna to have to find a way now to fix these wooden brackets onto the plywood now I've put a set square on there just so I can keep everything in place and this drill bit goes down further than the wood come in about three quarters of an inch and go down and into the plywood there now I don't think I've gone all the way through no I haven't so what I'm going to do now is go all the way through I'm going to flip it over get a bigger drill bit this is 9.5 millimeters doesn't really matter so long as it's big enough to countersink I am just slowly put that onto speed one I think going to countersink now don't press down when you do this because you'll go straight through if you're not careful so there's, that's a countersink I don't know if it's enough but it's enough to start off with forward screws countersunk hole and obviously the hole is in the base uh, wood which I've done and then just start screwing in now that has gone below the surface I can feel it's gone below the surface just square it off which is there and then we'll drill the second hole about three quarters of an inch in in the center and again it doesn't have to be perfect now this time it needs to go all the way through and you can see I can just see it coming through there so now I need to countersink that but what I'm going to do is drill all four holes before I do that let's see what we've got on the base and you can see we've got the four holes there and then I'm going to countersink right so I'm going to start that off by hand just put it in slightly so that started now I've got to line up the other four holes and because I've only just screwed it in slightly it's going to make it a little bit easier so now we've got the router base fixed onto the plywood this is scrap wood and it's about one and three eighths square I wouldn't go any smaller than that it doesn't have to be square it can be rectangular but you need a reasonable depth to it so I'm going to screw these now onto the plywood base just screw it in place so that's that process finished and if I flip it upside down that is what we've ended up with now what I need to do is drill the hole out for the router bits to go through and I'm just going to use this to mark where the hole wants to be for the router bits keep my fingers and that away from the other side just start the router bit and push it through so that's the centre marked there we go so next I'm going to drill and countersink this piece of scrap plywood onto the legs on the far end away from where the route is going to be so next you have to find a piece of wood to go on the end here that is roughly the same depth as this piece of wood is above the bottom of this piece of wood so that's about half an inch there this is three eighths of an inch so I'm about an eighth of an inch out but that's not vitally important because I'm not making this table for long projects and you'll see why that's important in a second and again this is not precision work it's just literally securing it I want it to be fairly strong that's why I'm using three screws there nice and easy use a piece of wood that's slightly less than two inches I've sliced this down slightly another piece of reclaimed wood I'm just going to drill down through the tabletop and this leg here about half an inch from the end and again 
no precision required for this just drill down then I'm going to go for a slightly bigger drill bit so you can see the difference in sizes drill through the actual fence itself not the table so now this screw will just slide through the fence that's all we do for the fence and I'll show you how it works you just set the fence where you want it and clamp it in position and it's as simple as that so basically th this is the router table completed you've got a fence you've got a table it's clamped down it is solid it's not going anywhere so that's the router table completed so let's have a look and see how it works you can see the actual piece of wood there that the router sits in the router sits in this bit here and i've got that resting on the edge of my workbench and then you can see why this bit here needs to be roughly the same depth as that bit because if it's any bigger then the router table will be t tilting that way and if it's any smaller it'll be tilting that way now it doesn't matter if it's tilting slightly unless you're using a long piece of work and i'm not going to be doing anything long on this so if you actually want to use this for longer pieces then you need to make sure that the depth there and this depth is the same so i'm going to put the router on it now i've run the rods through i'm just going to clamp these down on the rods so that just secures the router a little bit more and that is solid in there now just to check that table is absolutely solid now i'm going to push the router bit to the height that i want the cut to be which i think is about there and then i've got to tighten the clamp so the router doesn't move now it's a bit fiddly but it's possible to change the router bit while it's on the table so it is a bit fiddly but it's possible so slacken off the collet you can pull the router bit out now if this is powered off make sure that you've unplugged it this is unplugged and this next bit that i'm going to put on has actually got a pilot on the top there which is on bigger router bits that would be a bearing but these are too small to have a bearing so the wood is supposed to run against that bearing on the top i'll demonstrate that in a second but that's the bit I'm going to put on now and it helps if you push the router up so that you can push the bit in from the top that looks okay and then nip it up with your spanner and I'm going to set it to the height I want which is about there right now you don't need the fence to do this I'm going to route one edge on each of these bits now it's important that it's the right edge when you push the wood into the bit because it's been anti-clockwise it will want to throw the wood that way over to my right so what you do is you kind of push the wood in against the bearing and then as you're moving it through the blade from then on it pulls the wood onto the router bit so i'll demonstrate that now right so slide the wood across touch the bearing and then push it through That's my first one done. It's the first route on the edge. So I've got one more to do. Put the wood down, slide it across until it touches the bearing. So this is a bit I'm going to put on. Now this has got a knot in it which could cause a problem. We'll have to wait and see. that's a nice edge on that same again now I'm going to show you what happens if you don't do this right watch what happens if I push this into the bit see how it throws it away that's why you've actually got to push against the pilot there So that is a profile that we've got it looked better when it's cleaned up what i've got to do now is put a rebate in it for the actual picture that's going inside the picture frame now i'm going to fit this flat bit in the dremel and i'm actually going to route the recess for the picture so you need to decide which side of the frame you want the rebate on so i'm just going to turn the dremel on and i'm going to cut into the fence so that gives me adjustment on the fence you'll see what i mean when i do it so carefully so just doing that now allows me to move that fence right over the router bit and set this width of the rebate to any width I want which is a very handy thing to do so you can only do that though with bits that don't have the pilots on <laughs> so 
So there are the two pieces of wood routed and now I'm going to sand them up and we'll make a picture for him. I'm actually going to cut the frame out using a miter saw. Now you can do this by hand if you want but believe me it's far easier if you've got a miter saw. Now you don't need a miter saw as big as this but they are very handy and they make life a lot simpler. So that's it clamped up now. You can see I've used an adjustable band clamp. I'll put a link to one of them in the video below. But it's just clamping now, it just needs to dry. There is a finished picture frame. Now I know that's not perfect, but it was basically just knocked together. We've got a rebate for whatever it is you want to put inside it. Now obviously there was a knot in that piece of wood. I never chose my wood very carefully. That's something to think about. But that even that is still usable. The little router table, it makes life so much simpler. So there we go. There's a the table. There's a picture frame, fairly simple process for both. Does take a bit of practice, but hopefully you found this video useful and thank you very much for watching.